man that most people consider to be the best in the game, Greg Inglis. Greg's had a, a wonderful career. You pitch him against all the greats of our game over 112 years, he's right up there. He's in the immortal status. Is Inglis making a break? He's got extreme pace. Forget about it. Forget about it. He's too fast. He's too quick. He's too talented. He just had the ability to, you know, find the try line, whether it's running around you or running straight for you. Is Inglis one of the superstars of the game? He bumps to the way when you really needed him, when there was something on the line, he'd always produce. Well, you're out of the way, who's next? Once he got the ball, you couldn't stop him. And he just flicked players off as if that were bits of confetti. Catch pass Sutton, here goes Johnston. Got it in and Greg Inglis does the Goanna. The Goanna ties into my heritage, my culture. The people that he's been able to inspire by doing the Goanna, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing what something like that can do. I'm a proud Indigenous man and I'm never afraid to say that. You know, I'm not ashamed of where, who I am or where I come from. You look at any young kid, particularly an Indigenous kid, they look at GI and their eyes light up. Greg has always tried to do the right thing. He's had falls along the way, but he's managed to get, get himself back, back up again, dust himself off and move forward. You look well, mate. You know, you look like a lot fitter than when you came back at the start of last year. <laughs> yeah, my mind's at ease and I know you know, my partner and I know what we're doing. Yep. Greg was all right during the season because he was playing. So, he, you know, he'd be, but the off season was a danger for him always. And, you know, he came over and said, oh, Richard, how are you? I mean, I'm struggling, I'm in trouble. I said, what do you mean? And he just said, you know, I'm in trouble, mate. I, I don't know what to do. There's so much that I've learned in myself. Yep. That, that's for sure. Yeah. When I did ask him if he was all right or if everything was okay, I knew he wasn't honest, you know? And this is something that, that um, you can just tell, you can just tell. Clearly, everybody, including the media, had picked up that there was depression, there was also an alcohol problem. It wasn't good. Just drinking three bottles of wine, you know, in one sitting on a Friday night. I said to him about a hundred times, I couldn't give a rat's ass about your football. It's irrelevant, irrelevant. Winning premierships has nothing to do with your life. Players aren't invincible. They might look it on the field and the way they play the game, particularly someone like Greg Inglis, they look like they're unstoppable, but they're quite fallible like the rest of us. Yeah, I'm just a small part of the people out there that has this mental illness, and I hope more people can come out and speak up about it. So I fear that if I didn't, you know, my mind's strong, but it's not that strong, so I don't know if I would have been sitting here today. I was born in Kempsey, which is on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. My earliest memory of playing footy was, I was about five years old. I remember walking up in the frost to Barrowville at the local footy junior fields there and playing bare feet and it was still frost on the on the grass and a bit icy as well and Barrowville Tigers was, you know, where I played from the age of five to 15. At the age of 14, I got spotted by Melbourne Storm talent scout um, playing in Port Macquarie. Our recruiting guy kept telling me that, you know, he had a, thought he had a, a superstar, you know, of the future. Sitting there chatting with Dad and gave him his business card and as we walked away, Dad said, showed it to me and I said, oh, is that actually the Melbourne Storm? Right. He goes, yeah, that's, I said, well, they want to be interested in me for. <laughs> when you sign a player like they did with Greg that young, it means they're going to tie them to the club until they're ready for first grade football. 
contract was $500 with, you know, boots and a tracksuit. So <laughs> I don't think it, anyone will see a $500 contract now. Nobody knew where it was going to head, obviously, but um, $500, yeah. <laughs> He'd have that in his, in his glove box these days. So after I signed the contract with Melbourne Storm, I was 16 and I moved down to Newcastle and went to Hunter Sports High. They are the pride of Newcastle these days. Yeah, Their side for today, Hunter Sports High, Inglis at fullback. I had four of my other cousins living down there at the same time. And, and after a while, they started drifts and drabs, going back home, getting back home and you know, getting homesick. And about eight months down the track, I was skipping school, being introduced to alcohol, parties, fights. Just stupid little things that teenagers would get up to back then. And I just woke up one day and said, this ain't for me, I need to get home. The Melbourne Storm had got in contact with us to let us know that they had a young bloke that needed to be put on the right track. Long run. <laughs> he was getting, you know, following the wrong crowd, um, you know, going to the beach during the day, wagon school. I was in the police service and uh, worked in the watch house and, um, they asked me if I'd like to take him in. Yeah, and this one here. It's just one of the family. <laughs> so I went up, moved up to Brizzy, yeah. felt a real connection with the family that I was living with, which was the Cool Girls. 2005. He's young. Yeah, look at him, mate. Skinny. Skinny. That was my family away from, you know, from my own family. Took me in as one of their own and treated me like one of their own. One night after training, footy training, I took him into the watch house to show him what could happen if he got on the wrong side of the law or, you, you know, he followed the wrong, um, you know, followed the wrong trails. Couldn't wait to get out of there, to be honest. And I remember turning around to Adrian and said, oh, don't ever bring me back here, I don't want to be here. And that was a massive insight to where I didn't want to end up. As Norse are now just 20 metres out from the line, Greg Inglis is there. Greg basically went straight into first grade up there. You know, he was playing first grade 17. This is friend, Greg Inglis, danger man. Oh, to up the way. Play on, play on, play on. He's heading for the corner. Try to Inglis. Can he do it all on his own? He tore teams apart. It made everyone sit up and have a look. Oh, what a talent, what a player. And they said, look, You've got the opportunity of a lifetime here. I said, you're, you're just a couple of steps away from playing NRL. Melbourne come to the right through Scott Hill. Ball out in front. His opportunities came when there were injuries for the Melbourne Storm and he made an instant impact. This is try time on debut. Greg Inglis will collect the four points. Oh, he'll remember tonight for quite some time. 2005 was, you know, a remarkable year. You know, made my debut, something I've been chasing for a very long time. Gets it on to Inglis, nobody can stop him. He wasn't a particularly big player then, but he had the footwork and he had the big right hand fend. Sowards after him, there's the big Inglis fend, in goes G.I. It didn't take long for people to see just how special he was. In the following year, got the phone call to make my origin debut. Thurston gets it on, Lucky gives it away, picked up by Inglis. He's just 19. He will play a lot more games in the maroon jersey. Don't worry about that. I was a bit surprised when he chose Queensland, to be quite honest, because, you know, he was brought up for 15 years in New South Wales. You know, it was obviously a, a great decision for Queensland, not so much New South Wales. From 2006 through to 2009, he exploded. Roberts is chasing. He won't get to England. The prestigious Clive Churchill medal winner. What a superstar of the game, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Inglis. We made the grand final 06, 07, 08, 09. Great team, great coach, great people involved. Puts the ball down, Greg Inglis, superstar. In 2010, unfortunately, some of the gloss was about to come off that success. The National Rugby League has been rocked by what is possibly its biggest scandal. The Melbourne Storm has been stripped of two premierships after massive breaches of the salary cap. The smoking gun was found hidden at Storm headquarters in the form of a second set of accounts. People go around saying that we knew, but everyone that was involved that 
those times that year did not know. Did not know there was two sets of books. Did not know what other players were on because you don't talk about that. The salary cap issue hit really hard with us. Um, we didn't see it coming. Greg was really shocked. And then I guess we didn't really know what was going to happen. What was clear was that if Melbourne were going to be under the salary cap for 2011, then some of their big names would have to go. And it soon emerged later that season that Greg would be probably the first of the big names to leave the club. When he told us he was leaving the storm, that was, you know, that, that was probably the most emotional time I, I, I've had in the game, to be quite honest. Former Melbourne player Greg Inglis has officially signed with South Sydney. Oh, I think it's probably the biggest sign in the last 30 years. It's, uh, um, it's a fantastic thing for our members. We sort of promised him to take care of him, him and his family and had talks with, with his wife Sally and she was really nice. You only got me just harassing you. Uh, yeah, well, you're, you're always one of the easy ones. We never got, you never got in any trouble at all. Right there and then just signed a the contract and we were there, lived with Shane for about six months to get on my feet. My kids still call him Big Brother, so uh, he can't, we inherited him and we've had him ever since. <laughs> I just want to feel comfortable in the club that I wanted to go to and the club that was was South and fitted me and fitted with the community and fitted with my Indigenous ties. Oh, he's a god around here, you know, that everyone loves GI. Oh, so run the same line, run the same thing, just stay that deeper. The ground's a sacred ground uh, for, for the Indigenous culture, and that's why we don't fence it in, it's, it's open. We must be the only club that you, know, you can go and watch us train every day. Oh, there you go. That means the world to me. No worries, all good. You'll meet anybody. You'll meet people from the lowest, the lower, the highest, the high, and always shake hands, always say hello to them. It'll be a long week, and at Redfern Oval, no-one's complaining. It's taken South Sydney more than four decades to return to League's big stage. It'd been 43 years since they won their comp. It was such a long premiership drought that people thought was never going to be broken. We're bloody pumped. This is our year. 43 years is a long time to wait. So many years at South Sydney back there, and that whole week, the grand final week, it's said to the boys, just enjoy it. Just sit back, read, enjoy it. There's a steely look about them, isn't there? It was one of those games where there was enormous pressure on everybody. Everybody in the club, you know, been so long, and it was a fairy tale, but I've learned a long time ago in rugby league, fairy tales just don't always come true. Matter of fact, they don't come true very often at all. And Keary makes a dart, gets the ball away to G.I. Obviously, it was a tough game. The game was in the balance here for most of the game. He's going to put another man in the coffin, and the Guyana crawls. To see Greg score that last try in the corner was amazing. It was a great moment, and that's when I knew we were the grand final one. Victorious after 43 years. Scoring that try, it was one of my proudest moments. You know, out of my career that I can, you know, it's one of my proudest moments. Absolutely. Incredible scenes here of jubilation and joy. After they won the Premiership, Greg still maintained his high standards, but then, in the first round of the 2017 season, disaster struck. A simple kick chase ended in disaster for the Rabbitohs. Playing the West Tigers round one, done my ACL on his kick chase, probably about 30 minutes into the game. They reckon the ACL is the most painful one you can go through. Scans revealed he's ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament and he's likely to miss the rest of the season. Stubborn enough for me, I stayed out until, you know, probably the 65th minute mark. Greg Inglis hobbled after it, he had that much time. He was on one leg. When I was feeling down, training was the only thing that kept me stable. And once all that went away, part of the reason why ACL had that massive effect, didn't have the routine. I tried to stay around the club, try and be involved with rugby league in any way, but it was something that I loved, just being taken away. And I just didn't know how to cope. Oh, yeah, obviously he was going through a lot. Um, 
probably kept a lot of stuff in and, um, you know, didn't let out. People around me, family around me were getting affected by my mood swings. Felt like shit. Oh, stuff it, I'll just have a drink. Before I knew it, there was one bottle gone. Go for dinner, there's another bottle gone. Come home, there's another bottle gone. It's unfortunate for me, those ones closest to me are the ones that I've hurt the most. Greg Inglis has won many battles on the football field. Now he's facing one away from it. Inglis has admitted himself to a mental health clinic to deal with depression. So that was the first time that I really felt that he reached out and said, look, I'm really in trouble and I need some help. And he went to, went to that institution for a couple of weeks and he came out and he said he was better. And it was one of the problems with Greg though, you, you never really got out of Greg how he felt. Look, it was valuable, the first thing, but it wasn't effective. I didn't leave my room. I got treated different. Um, just, you now go on walks while they're in doing group therapy. Came out of that, still same. Jitted a lot of different medications and not being properly diagnosed. I didn't understand it, so I assumed him going in there, he'd come out all beautiful. We're on the way again and we've solved it. And it was never solved for him, so that was where the challenge was. Tackling technique, New South Wales well ahead in the line break. Oh, oh Jake's, oh, Jake's oh, Raboyevich passed. The 2018 season shaped up as being a really strong year for Greg. He got over his issue with his knees, he'd, he'd done all the hard work in rehab, was named Queensland captain, and then in October he was named Australian captain. Oh, the sleeping giant is back! Greg Inglis will lead a new look kangaroo side against New Zealand and Tonga this month. Hey guys, just uh, heading out to Dubbo. It didn't work out for him. He took a trip out to Dubbo and unfortunately, you know, he got caught on the way back um, with a drink driving charge. We begin this morning with a rugby league bombshell. South Sydney Rabbitohs superstar Greg Inglis has been caught allegedly drink driving and speeding just hours after being named as the new kangaroos captain. The first sign of healing is actually admitting you've got a problem and um, that's what Greg did, you know, so went to court. Yeah, I'm, I admit that I was in the wrong. Um, we took the captaincy off him, yes, I admit I'm, I'm in the wrong. Um, I'd like to apologise to the public. Um... Didn't whinge about it, didn't carry on about it. He got on with things and showed great dignity. You know, I learned from this mistake and, you know, it definitely won't happen again. I knew what it, what he'd be like. I knew how how it would affect him. And um, how he would uh, how he would really struggle with it personally. I wasn't exactly aware of what he was going through. I know he was having some relationship difficulties and I know he was just finding it difficult to to deal with. You know, he, he sort of went away, um, went to Bali and got away from it all and you know, escaped it and, and everything else and got back and, and all. But, you know, none of the challenges went away. Greg Inglis leading them out again and needing one try to reach the 150, but he's, he's been sitting stationary for quite some time. So he started the season underdone and then we played a game at St George and the centre just stood up and went around, which Greg would have driven him into the grandstand nine times out of ten times. Through Lafay to Pereira, they got away from Greg Inglis. And so that was when it really hit me that this is, this is, this career is coming to an end. Today's the official announcement of my retirement. When Greg decided to retire, it was shocking, but it also wasn't because he had battled with shoulder and knee injuries for so long. I just thought, thought to myself, you know, I can't be the leader that I used to be. Um, can't have that presence that I, that I used to have. A lot of players really struggle in retirement if they don't have something to retire to, and there had been concern with GI about what he was going to do once he finished playing the game. My skate was training at footy, and once that was gone, it was, didn't know how to handle it, didn't know what to do. This table didn't work, so you take on different script, we'll give you a different script, that didn't work, or we combine these two, and then I was like, oh, yeah, and then alcohol is another form of depression, and I was, you know, 
wasn't good, which is why the second stink in rehab happened. As Brisbane prepares for Magic Round, Queensland... The Magic Round is like a festival of football where every team converges on the one city, in this case it was Brisbane, to play the entire round of matches. Oh, that's a good kick. Greg was up there as an ambassador for Souths and reports emerged on the Monday that he'd gone on a bit of a bender. He went to, a, to the uh, Magic Weekend and uh, alcohol mixed with the tablets he were on wasn't good for him. Um, and that was his lowest point. It was a, it was a really tough time because there was, a, you know, there was 48 hours, we didn't even know where he was. But, you know, we, we eventually found out where he was and, and then we, you know, we put things in place to, 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 to bring him home. I don't know how long I could have kept going on until I actually hit you know, past rock bottom. You know, I needed to hit at a low point, very much so. I was feeling that he would take his own life, you know, and that, you know, because he, he just couldn't see any way out of it and, and where he was going and how he was going to get there and felt that he'd let everybody down. When I was going through all that there, suicide thoughts never crossed my mind, never had suicidal thoughts at all. NRL legend Greg Inglis has been admitted to a Sydney rehabilitation clinic to be treated for alcohol problems and depression. It is the second bout of rehab for the 32-year-old who's been struggling since his retirement from football last month. The second time around made me... I allowed myself to be vulnerable, to open up, to actually let go, not looking over my shoulder and being judged, being diagnosed probably through, you know, Professor Gordon Parker. He had a hint of it first, which he diagnosed me later as a bipolar 2 disorder. The quintessential features of a bipolar 2 disorder are for the individual to experience oscillations in mood and energy. Bipolar 2 has the highest rate of all mood disorders in terms of suicide risk. And I think the reason for that is that during a high, people feel on top of the world. They are absolutely bulletproof. And then when they start to free fall, and they often fall very rapidly into a hole, they think, I just can't go back into that space again. When they diagnosed him with that, it was like, man, it makes so much sense. You know, this is why he was doing this, this is why he's doing that. As I was in a high, so I train the best, lift the best in the gym, be like so good at everything, what I did. When I was feeling down, I just don't talk. Just shut down, and before I know it, I'm, you know, just snap. And then two, five minutes later, it's apologetic, sympathy. Medication is going to bring most people back into a state where they no longer have their mood swings. Greg uh, responded to my preferred mood stabiliser with the end result that he basically just needs one tablet a day to keep his mood stable. And that protects him both from highs and lows and restores quality of life. You're looking all right, you're looking healthy. <laughs> go for dinner and still enjoy me wine. Yeah, just have a glass of wine. Go home, happy, bed, one tablet, one glass of wine. It's taken me this long to actually find this balance, but I'm glad I found it before it was too late. And I see the people around me that I've hurt along the way. And it still hurts me today to see that, what I put them through. My partner, Elise, she's been there. She's been through it. She's ridden the shit wave. She's ridden the good wave. Whoa, whoa. What you looking at? Her family and herself um, doing an amazing job in, in supporting him and um, just letting him be, be him. He's warmed up now, he can actually stuck his gut in. You know, all my support network around me has been fantastic, you know, especially without a doubt with the lease as well. You know, making sure I'm checking in with my friends and that from rehab. He's happy, uh -huh. he's really happy. You know, he's, him and Sally get on great, yeah. he gets on great with his kids. Then at least he's close to Sally. I mean, you know, at least come along the scene after they'd split. Everything he does, he enjoys. He's got into horses and 
Uh, he takes takes them along to you know dressage and all that sort of stuff. Hey, people may not realise this, but with horses, it's good for your mind. I don't know. There's just something calming about them that um that I enjoy. She enjoys riding. I enjoy getting out. Looking down the paddocks with her. I try to ride, but I'm not as not as a good rider. I'm just more of a get them warmed up, feed them, make sure they're all right. But yeah, we've, um, right now I feel like we've got a great balance of life. Well, the last time I saw him clinically, he was in great shape. He had no mood swings. Uh, he was clearly enjoying life. He felt that in many ways, so many aspects of his life had improved. To the extent, basically, um, I probably don't need to see him again. <laughs> Just trying to get in there, back in, and then try to spin out. Yeah. Yeah. As defenders, we've got to try to hold him up. And then when I saw GI in the pre-season kicking balls around and helping out at South Training, I remember saying to someone, that bloke could still play. He should play again. And it turns out that he could. Former Rabbitohs captain Greg Inglis will again lace up his boots to compete overseas in the Super League. He's planning a comeback, joining Warrington in the UK for their 2021 season. Somebody stop him! I think it was about three weeks into the COVID, you know, when Australia, all the, pretty much the world, went into shutdown. You know, I was having chats with my good mate over there, Jason Clark. What do you reckon the club will say if I wanted to come? Two days later, he goes, here's the, um, here's the owner's um, number, I'll give him a call. I just wanted to come out of retirement and give it a one last shot. He never got to finish how he wanted to finish. He never got to finish with the, the season that he wanted to have. And he gets to do that with Warrington uh, in the UK. Yeah, feeling good. Feeling back on track. Getting back into training, get back into, you know, some kind of routine. When you look at somebody like Greg, uh, as a rugby league player, he was one of the best of us, the strongest of us. But even he struggled with it. You know, so when you're somebody that's struggling, I think you, you need to look at somebody like Greg. He's gone through it and he's come through the other side. The key message to put out there, I think, to the community is this is not a one-off. Bipolar 2 is a very treatable condition. I want people to know that they're not alone. And it is OK to actually reach out, seek help. That's my biggest message. You'll never be judged. The people who judge you are the ones that you don't want in your life. The people who are there to hold your hand or give you a shoulder to cry on, they're the ones that you want around in your life.